Hey guys, um, congratulations, your last lecture. We are gonna do 8.2 using the quadratic formula, which just means when you have a quadratic function or the graph, um, remember the graph is a parabola. When you have one of those, you can factor it and find your two X's or find your X value. Um, but there's another tool you can use to find, to solve those or to find your X. And that is to use the quadratic formula. You can also graph it and then you can like look at the points and those will also be your X's. Um, they're called the roots. So we're just gonna practice finding the roots of a quadratic equation using the quadratic formula. Um, there is going to be one question, at least one question on your homework that asks you to combine 7.7 .7 and 8.2. So you're going to have to find the value of X when X, when part of X is a negative under the radical. So we're going to use I once in the lecture and you're going to have to use Y once in your homework. I'm going to pause this and change my video to show the work. Okay, let's get started. Using the quadratic formula. Quadratic equations, the quadratic equations that we're talking about today are written as a x squared plus b x plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are positive or negative numbers. b can be zero, c can be zero, a cannot be zero. Okay, so to be a quadratic equation, you have to have an x squared. a can be one, so it can just be x squared, but this is linear and this is linear when we graph it. So the part that makes it quadratic is the a. You need an a, okay? Quadratic equations have one unknown. The unknown is this guy, right? And he's being squared and he's um, being taken to the first power in the same quadratic equation, good? They contain a square term and linear terms. These are This is the linear term and this is a linear term. This is a square term because it's squared. For example, 2x squared plus x equals three is a quadratic equation in x. 7t equals 5t squared plus one is a quadratic equation in t. There's a formula for finding the value of the unknown. The unknown is the X, or if it's in another letter, it'll be that variable. But before it can be, oops, I'm sorry. Before it can be used, the equation must be written with all a term, the terms on one side of the equation. That should not have an S right there. <laughs> um, so we have to set it equal to zero, which is just standard form, right? We've definitely seen that before. So the first step for using the quadratic formula is make sure that your quadratic equation is in standard form, okay? So just to explain what we're doing when we're solving using the quadratic formula. Well, let me show you the quadratic formula. This is the quadratic formula. A quadratic formula written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero has the solutions x equals negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times the a times the c divided by two times the a, okay? Uh, so when you see the b, the c, and the a, that means we're plugging in your first term, first, the first number, the number with the x, and the c, the number that's um, constant, we're plugging those in, to the quadratic formula. Good. The, the way we found the quadratic formula, it's not just um, random math, is we took ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and then we set it equal, we solved for x, right? So the first thing we would do is we would say, we would subtract c right? So then it would be ax squared plus bx equals negative c. And then do, you do all the steps until you have x alone, and this is what you're left with on the other side. So we just took this very thing, and we solved it for x. And this is what you get when you solve it for x. Now you can substitute in whatever numbers your quadratic equation happens to have. So that's the first thing to know. That's just a fun thing to know, I think. The other important part is this plus and the minus, that means you often have two solutions, okay? So that means that you have one X 
that is x equals negative b minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. You're going to have another x that is x equals b plus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. You have two different answers because of that plus and that minus. All right, so that's the quadratic formula. We are finding the roots of your quadratic equation. So the x's are the roots. They are also called the x-intercepts. They are also called the zeros. Let's talk about a quadratic function. A quadratic function, when we graph it, right, we can sometimes see the zeros or where it crosses the x-axis. A quadratic function is graphically represented by a parabola. These are parabolas, okay, with a vertex. The vertex is the top or the bottom of your parabola. That would be your vertex located at the origin. So here is a vertex located at the origin. Good. That's the vertex located at 0, 0. So x is 0. We have one x value, OK? So that could be at the origin. Looks like that guy below the x-axis. What if it's, that's a negative, right? That's opening down. Should we do all of them opening down? Uh, no, let's have one opening up. So below the x-axis, opening up, looks like this, okay? And these intercepts might be negative two, zero, and three, zero, right? So here your answers are x is negative two and x is three. Or you could have a situation where the vertex is located above the x-axis. So that means you're way up here and we have no solution. We have no roots, no zeros, no x-intercepts. So these are the reasons why, these three graphs show you why sometimes you'll get one answer, sometimes you'll get two answers for x. This has one answer, x is zero, because it, we're at the vertex is right on the x-axis. You can have two answers when both sides of the parabola cross the x-axis, or your parabola might never cross the x-axis because even though it goes on forever, right? All of these are gonna go on forever. This is never gonna cross the x-axis because it's going away from the x-axis as it goes on forever. So that's how you, um, how you know you might end up with one answer, two answers, or zero answers for what x might be. The x-intercepts of the function are given by the quadratic formula. So this is just something we've already seen before, right? We have ax squared plus bx plus c. Here's the quadratic formula, okay? To solve it. Let's solve one together, okay? So solve the equation 2x squared plus x equals three. How do I do it? First, let's number these. First, second, third, fourth, also, sorry, my hands are looking so rough. We, my uh, broiler on my oven doesn't have a guard. And so every time I take my daughter's toast out in the morning, I burn my hands and always my right hand. And then I have to make a math video and it's not beautiful to look at. Okay, step one, rearrange the equation so that all terms are on one side. So you have two X squared plus X equals three. We want all the terms on one side. We want it set equal to zero. We want it in standard form. So I'm just going to subtract three, subtract three. Now I have two X squared plus X minus three is three minus three is zero. So that is in standard form. All the terms are on one side. At one side. Hmm. All right, next step. So that was our first step. Here's our second step. Write down the values of A, B, and C. 
A is two. B is, if there's nothing in front of the X, the X exists, there is, there are two X squared, there is one X, right? And then how many um, constants do we have? We have negative three, not just three, negative three, okay? Write down the values of A, B, and C. Three, substitute those values into the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Good? So we have x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3 over 2 times 2. Substitute those values into the formula. Work out the values in the square root and in the denominator. Now, x equals negative 1 plus or minus. So we have 1 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 3. <clears throat> you are welcome to look at that as we're combining 1 with negative four times two times negative three. All right, or you can say I'm subtracting four times two times negative three. So I'm subtracting negative 24. But the if the four is negative, the two is positive and the three is negative, we get a positive 24. So we're saying one, plus 24, good, over two times two is four. Let me write that again. So that's negative one plus or minus the square root of 25, that's lucky, that's a perfect square, over four, right? Um, so that is one, yeah, I think that's simplified. Okay, so that's work out the values in the square root and in the denominator, the square root was a 25, the denominator is a four, now it says split the formula in two. Oh, sorry, no, we would change that to a five. <laughs> Let's finish that. So we're gonna say negative one plus or minus the square root of 25 is five over four. Good. <laughs> I don't know why I was staring at that for so long. Split the formula into two. One's a positive five and one's a negative five. So we have X is negative one plus five over four. And we have x is negative 1 minus 5 over 4. Good. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4 over 4. Sorry, you can't see that. Negative 1 plus 5 is 4 over 4. 4 over 4 is 1. And then negative 1 minus 5 is 6 over 4 which is I can divide six by two and divide four by two, or I can say six is three times two, four is two times two, cancel the common factors and six fourths becomes three halves. So my answers for the equation two X squared plus X equals three is that I say X is one, and x is three halves. You are welcome to solve it by factoring. If you know how to factor two x squared minus x plus x minus three equals zero, if you know how to factor it to x minus one, two uh, x minus three, perfectly fine, okay? Oh, sorry. I was wondering why I got two positives. All right, that was a mistake. I made a mistake back here. I said negative five minus four is a positive six. It's a negative six. So it's going to be negative three-fourths, right? Negative six divided by four is negative three divided by two. So X is one, X is negative three-halves. Yikes. Now, what you want to do real quick, just to um, finish strong, is you want to take your equation and you want to put your X into it. You don't need to use that one. You can use this one because I'll know if this is equal to three, just those two, okay? So I'm gonna say two times one squared 
plus one is three, okay? Negative three halves, two times negative three halves squared plus negative three halves is also three. So you can check your answer. Again, you don't need to use the quadratic equation if you see that you can factor. Again, solve 3n squared plus n minus 3 equals 0 using the quadratic formula. First step is tell me what a, b, and c are. It's already in standard form, okay? 3n squared plus n minus 3. There are no x's, but there are n's. a is 3, b is a 1, c is a negative 3. Did we already do this one? No, now it's 2, 1. This one was 2, 1, negative 3. This one's 3, 1, negative 3. <laughs> All right. Our first step is, uh, nope, we already did the first step and the second step. We rearranged the equation, so all terms were on one side. We wrote down the value of a, b, and c. Now we're going to substitute the values into the formula. So I'm going to call this step three already. And our formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a. If we substitute those numbers in, we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 3 over 2 times 3. x equals negative 1. Oh, sorry, our next step is work out the values in the square root and the denominator. So we have 1 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 3 is 36. 1 plus 36 over 2 times 3 is 6, right? And I'll just write it one more time. Negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 37 over 6, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> can we simplify the square root of 37? 37, and this is what I would do if I'm not, if I'm not comfortable with the number 37. 37 divided by 4, no. 37 divided by 9, no. 37 divided by 16, no. I think it's prime. Good. What would the other one be? 25? No, we're not going to get 25. So now we just have to split it into two formulas, one using the positive and one using the negative. So we have negative 1 plus the square root of 37 over 6. Oh, sorry, x equals. And then we have also x equals negative 1 minus the square root of 37 over 6. 6. And there is nothing else you can do. You can't negative 1 over 6. There's nothing that simplifies. Square root of 37 over 6, nothing simplifies. The square root of 37, you can't um, take anything out of that. You can't simplify the square root of 37. So you are done. You just have two answers, one for the positive sign and one for the negative sign. So sometimes they you get a nice answer, like a whole number or an easy fraction, sometimes you get a crazy answer, that's perfectly fine, okay? You're still, you're finished. That's the answer. Let's do these guys. <clears throat> I might need more paper, one second. All right, I'm just gonna assume I need more paper. Here we have x squared minus six, x plus 12 equals zero. We already have it in standard form. Let's first, our second step is find out what a, b, and c are. a is one b is a negative 6, and c is a positive 12. If you can factor this, go ahead and factor it, okay? Um, you don't need to use the quadratic formula. We use the quadratic formula when we can't factor it um, because the answer is something like this, and we're not going to get a factor that looks, right? We're not going to be able to factor something that when the answer looks like that. Um, all right, so... Now we substitute it into x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. 
negative b is a negative 6. So negative negative 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12, yeah? Over 2 times 1. x equals a negative negative 6 is going to be a positive 6. The square root, or sorry, negative 6 squared, feel free to do it in your calculator, negative 6 squared is a positive 36 minus 4 times 1 times 12. 12 times 4 is 48, but it's minus, so 36 minus 48 over 2 times 1 is 2. Good. 36 minus 48, negative 12. So x equals 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 12 over 2. This is when I said at the beginning we might get, um, we're going to get at least one imaginary number. So we're going to use what we know from 7.7 .7 to change the square root of negative 12 to simplify it. Okay, so uh, yeah, short break. The square root of negative 12 becomes the square root of negative, or sorry, negative positive 12 <laughs> times negative 1, right? Negative 1 becomes i outside the radical. We're done. Negative 1 becomes i. Positive 12 can become 3 times 4, right? So we have positive 12 under the radical becomes 3 times 4 under the radical. 4 under the radical becomes a 2. So now it's square root of 3 times 2 times i. So the square root of negative 12 is going to be 2i square root of 3. Good. 6 plus or minus 2i square root of 3. Over. Two. Okay. We are not finished yet because you can see what I want you to look at when you have this fraction. There are two answers. There's the plus and the minus, but there's also this fraction and this totally separate fraction. Oops, I shouldn't have made it pink because the stuff up there was pink. All right, let's rewrite it. x equals 6 over 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 3 over 2. Okay, this is a very important step. They'll tell you it's wrong if you do not simplify your fraction. 6 and 2, just like we did with, um, ooh, just like we did with negative 6 over 4. We put it into its prime factorization and we canceled out, um, anything that was common. Okay, so let's look at six over two. Six becomes three times two over two. What do we do? We can now cancel the twos. Six divided by two is three. This shows you that six divided by two is three, but in a way that you can repeat with even bigger numbers, okay? And it's okay to leave it as a fraction. So sometimes it'll be, I can take out the two and I still have a number on top and on bottom. That's perfectly fine. So six over two becomes three plus or minus. Here we have two i squared three over two. Just like we canceled out the twos here, I want you to cancel out these twos here, okay? Plus or minus i square root of three. Nothing under the fraction, okay? So we have three plus or minus i square root of 3. Now, that last step, I think it's 5, right? Step 5 is 3, oh, sorry, x equals 3 plus i square root of 3. x equals 3 minus i square root of 3. So my two answers for x squared minus 6x plus 12 equals 0 is x is 3 plus i square root of 3, and x is 3 minus i square root of 3.
So don't stop just because you get a negative under the radical. Okay, keep going because there's going to be a homework question that involves the letter I, just like from 7.7. .7. Okay, so that was problem A. Let's go on to B. B is x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Way to use a different color. So step two, step one is put it into standard form. It's already in standard form. A is one, B is negative five, C is six. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC over two A. So that means X equals negative, negative five, plus or minus the square root of negative five squared minus four times a, oops, sorry, times one <laughs> times six over two times one. Minus a negative five becomes a positive five plus or minus 25, negative four times a positive six, right? Negative 24. Ooh, that's a nice one. Over two times one is two. So it said uh, step three was substituted in for into the equation. Step four is solve under the radical. So we have five plus or minus one, the square root of one over two. Now we can just split it. Five. Oh, so no, sorry. <laughs> I always do this. I like see that it's done and I don't write it out. Five plus or minus, what's the square root of one? The square root of one is one. Five plus or minus one over two. So that means five plus one over two. And five minus one over two. So that means X is four over two or X is, oops, sorry, X is six over two if you're adding, and x is four over two if you're subtracting. Six over two becomes three times two over two. Four times two becomes four, oops, sorry, two times two over two, which I know this is a silly. Um, we know that six divided by two is three, but I just want you to see that it will always work to put it into its prime factorization and cancel stuff out. Okay, so in this case, x is 3 and x is 2. Go ahead, and go back up. 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 6 should equal 0. Okay, x is 3 and x is 2. Let's see. 3 squared minus 5 times 3 plus 6, 0. 2. 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6 also zero. So you can always check your answer. Third one is 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals zero. Okay, it's set equal to zero already. So our second step is a is 2, b is 3, c is negative 2. Put it into x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 2 over 2 times 2. negative three plus or minus. Now we're, I guess now we're solving, simplifying inside the radical. Nine minus four times two times negative two. Negative 16. So minus a negative 16 is gonna be plus 16, right? Or negative four times two times negative two would be adding 16 to nine over two times two is 
4. Good. x equals, let's make sure we can't simplify, negative 3 plus or minus 16 and 9. Oops. 16 plus 9 is 25. Negative 3 plus or minus 25 over 4. I'm going to remember to do it this time. Negative 3 plus or minus 5 over 4. Good. All right, now fifth step is split it in two. X equals negative 3 plus 5 over 4, which is 2, right, over 4. And then x is negative 3 minus 5 over 4, which is negative 8 over 4. Let's simplify these fractions, all right, one more time. 2 over 4 is the same as 2 over 2 times 2, okay? I can cancel out one of the 2s, and I'm left with 2 on the bottom. I can't put a 0 up here. I'm looking for 2 over 4, right? 2 over 4 is 0. 0.5. If I say 0 over 2, that's not 0. 0.5. But if I put a 1 as a placeholder, 1 over 2 is 0. 0.5. So 2 over 4 is 0. 0.5, 1 over 2 is 0. 0.5. So I'm putting it into my prime factorization, canceling out common factors, and putting in a 1 as a placeholder if necessary. Okay? The other one is negative 8 over 4. We could even put this into negative 8 is negative. What would we say? 8 becomes... 4 times 2, but 4 becomes 2 times 2, right? So the prime prime factorization of 8 is negative 2 times 2 times 2. 4 is just 2 times 2, right? Cancel. So negative 8 over 4 is negative 2. So my answers are x is 1 half and x is negative 2. Here it was, x is 3 and x is 2. They're both positive. Yeah. x is 3, x is 2. Here we got x is 1 half and x is negative 2. Feel free to put it into your calculator if you will. OK, I think we've got three more examples. x squared plus 7x plus 4. Nope, I need this. <laughs> so we've got x squared plus 7x plus 4 is 0. a is 1. b is 7. c is 4. Right? x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a. I'm going to plug those in. x is negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4 over 2 times 1. Now we're going to simplify x equals negative 7 plus or minus. 7 squared is 49, right? Negative 4 times 1 times 4 is a negative 16. So we're combining with a negative 16 over 2. 49 minus 16 is 33. Negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 33 over 2. Can we simplify the square root of 33? Divided by 4? No. Divided by 9? No. Divided by 16? No. Divided by 25? No. So 33 just gets left as is. So now we can separate it out. x equals negative 7 plus square root of 33 over 2 and x equals negative 7 minus square root of 33 
over two. There is nothing more you need to do. You cannot simplify seven divided by two. Good. All right. Six equals four X plus minus five X squared. All right, now we have six equals four X minus five X squared. What we need to do now is set this equal to zero, just like this one is set equal to zero. So we're gonna subtract six, subtract six. Zero equals four X minus five X squared minus six. Next thing, we're not done. You need to put it in descending order. So you should have this one in the front. It doesn't matter if we have zero equals or equals zero, but it doesn't matter that the five X squared is in front. I called it five X squared, but it's a negative five X squared. Also, you're welcome to move both of these over here. So it's not a negative five X squared. Yeah, I like that better. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to change it to positive 5x squared minus 4x plus 6 because if I moved both of these over, right, it would be minus 4x plus 5x squared minus 4x plus 5x squared over here, good? So we have 5x squared minus 4x plus 6 equals 0. Negative 4x, positive 5x, positive 6, good? <laughs> All right, let's, tell, let's decide what a is. a is a positive 5, b is a negative 4, C is a positive six. It does not matter. You are welcome to keep it like this. Then A is a negative five, B is a positive four, C is a negative six. So everything like this, or you can change the sign of all three. It won't change the value of your answers, okay? Now let's plug it in. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC over two A negative negative four plus or minus the square root of negative four squared minus four times five times six over two times five. Good. Negative minus a negative four becomes a positive four. Negative four squared is 16, right? Because four times four is 16. Negative four times five times six is negative 120, 16 minus 120 over 10. Okay. Four plus or minus 16 minus 120 is negative 104. Oops, sorry, I forgot the negative. Over 10. Good. 104. Let's see if we can factor 104. 104 divided by 4 is 26. 104 divided by 16. No. Okay. 104 divided by 9. All right. 104. Let's factor it for real <laughs> instead of just guessing. So the square root of 104 of a negative 104 becomes the square root of negative one and 104. Good. Negative one becomes I outside of the square root. So we have I square root 104, we decided is divided by four and we get 26. All right. Four is a perfect square. So that comes out as two. The square root of 26, 26 becomes, what, 26 divided by 4, no, 26 divided by 2, 13, 
26 becomes 2 times 13. That's prime because you can't divide 13 by anything. You can't divide 2 by anything. So our final answer is the square root of negative 104 is 2i square root 26. So I'm not going to say 13 times 2. I'm going to say 26. So first we had the i. Then we had the two, then we tried to simplify any further, we couldn't. So negative 104, the square root of a negative 104 becomes two i square root 26. X equals four plus or minus two i square root 26 over 10. Now we have <clears throat> X equals four plus two no, let's do plus or minus 2i over 26, square root of 26 over 10. Uh, sorry, I wasn't really thinking of what I was doing. So first I want to divide it into two fractions. Okay, so we have the fraction 4 over 10. Plus or minus 2i square root 26 over 10. Let's factor out four and 10, okay? Four becomes two times two. 10 becomes five times two, right? You can't divide two by anything. You can't divide five by anything. That's the prime factorization. Plus or minus two i square root 26. You can't factor two, right? Two is a prime number. 10 is again, five times two. Now come through. Get rid of the ones that are common to the top and the bottom. What we have is 2 fifths plus or minus i square root 26 over 5. Okay, so my two answers, I know this looks incredibly complex, but my two answers are x equals 2 fifths plus i square root 26 over 5, x is equal to 2 fifths minus i square root of 26 over 5. If you have the same denominator, you can also say x is 2 plus i square root 26 over 5, x is 2 minus i square root 26 over 5. No difference between this and this, if that five is common to both, all right? Last one. Last one is x plus five times x minus one equals two, okay? Well, we have to foil it out. x times x is x squared. x times negative one is negative x. Five times x is a five x. 5 times negative 1 is a negative 5 equals 2. If this is equal to 0, then we would just say x is negative 5, x is plus 1, right? If it was already in factored form. So if it was, or it's already in factored form, x plus 5, x minus 1 equals 0. We would just say x plus 5 is 0, x is negative 5, x minus 1 is 0, x is 1, right? But it wasn't set equal to 0, it was set equal to 2. So we have to Foil it out and move the two. So that becomes x squared plus 4x minus 5 equals 2. Move the 2. x squared plus 4x minus 7 equals 0. Good. A is 1, B is 4, C is negative 7, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2 times a. Good. <clears throat> negative 4 plus or minus 4 squared is 16. Negative 4 times negative 7. 28. Over two. Twenty eight 
28 plus 16, 44. Over two. Uh, the square root of 44 is four and 11, right? So two squared 11. X equals negative four plus or minus two squared 11 over two, good. Um, break it, no, don't break it into two. Yes, break it into two. This two, not the plus two and the minus two. <laughs> X equals negative four halves plus or minus two squared 11 over two. Four, two, four divided by two is just two times two over two plus or minus two squared 11 over two, right? Those cancel, those cancel, and I have x equals 2 plus or minus square root 11. So x is 2 plus square root 11. x is 2 minus square root, sorry, 11. I was looking at the screen and trying to write. <laughs> and that is the end. Um, the factoring thing won't come up. Um, you won't have to foil it and then move the answer. Um, it was just another opportunity to practice all the rest of it. Uh, thank you guys so much. I will see you in college algebra maybe and um, have a great break. Well done.